Okay, so I've wanted to make a project like this on my channel for a very long time, but to be completely honest with you guys, I just didn't know what franchise I should start with. But since I just finished watching 8 plus hours of game movies going over not only expansion packs, but the main story of each game in the franchise as of writing this, which holy hell was almost 5 months ago, I feel confident enough to start my first attempt with Skylanders. Usually with a project like this, a person would write a story and not really go too deep into gameplay or explain story decisions, but I want to do the opposite of that. And then I realized I would have to explain the entirety of the gameplay changes, the feasibility, the enemies, the new Skylanders, the timeline, and a bunch of other things for all of this to work. So this is going to be the video explaining some of the changes along with the prologue chapter. One of the main reasons I'm doing this is because I'm a writer at heart, and I genuinely enjoy writing stories that I create in my head, as you can probably tell from the custom Skylanders videos. But like I said before, there's a lot of work I need to do before I get into the writing and storytelling. And it's also going to kind of serve as a pilot video to see if you guys want me to continue to do a project like this. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So the first question that we need to tackle is one of the biggest challenges in this imaginary game. How are the Skylanders going to work? Now this may seem like a huge challenge, but I have a pretty good answer to this. The D-Pad, Soul Gems, and Expansion Packs. I know some of you are confused, but let me explain. Compared to other games, Skylanders has a pretty limited control scheme. Using an Xbox controller and trap team for an example, the only buttons that are used are the left joystick, A, B, X, and Y, and the trigger buttons to interact with things and switch to a villain. The bumpers are just extra ways to attack, and the D-Pad isn't even used. Which I'll get to in a second. See, in every Skylanders game, you're set to how many Skylanders you own. If you're a collector with hundreds of Skylanders, you'll pretty much never fail a level. But if you're a kid who only bought the starter pack, then good luck on Nightmare Mode, little Timmy. You're gonna need it. This also makes the games unnecessarily restrictive in my opinion, meaning if you want to play a certain minigame, open an elemental gate, or just 100% the game, you're once again out of luck unless you have cash to burn or already have a massive collection. But in this game, you slowly collect your arsenal of Skylanders over time, starting off with a few before eventually getting a ton of them. And the way you get your Skylanders is through Soul Gems. And because of this, new portals and figures are going to be scrapped for the time being. I know, I know, what I just said is heresy of the highest level, but let me explain myself. As much as I hate to say it, the portals and figures are just far too risky, especially when you consider how much they costed originally, and how the Skylanders games could potentially set the gaming world on fire if we take that route. According to this Los Angeles Times magazine from 2012, launching Skylanders cost Activision more than $100 million, and that was just launching the franchise, who knows how much more they would have had to spend for the other games. And after doing some digging, which I suggest just you take with a grain of salt since it comes from Reddit, Spyro's Adventures development costed around $3.5 million. Meaning, if the Redditor is correct, the rest of that 96.5 most likely went into the figures in advertising. And that's just the money side of things. If you want to see how badly this could turn out, just look at what's happening with Star Wars Outlaws DLC. Pretty much half of the gaming community lost their collective minds when they learned that parts of the game were going to be locked behind a paywall. Imagine how they're going to react when parts of a level are locked behind a wall that you technically have to pay for in a single-player experience. I know it sucks, but the best idea I came up with to solve this was the Soul Gems and making the previous portals along with the Skylanders compatible. Yes, this will screw the resale market beyond belief, but I need to get back to what I was talking about because holy hell, this was a really long tangent. If you find a Soul Gem in a level or earn one in a quest line, which I'll talk about in a later video, you can unlock the character and play them throughout the levels of the game. And if you 100% a level or a chapter, you'll unlock a costume or a costume set. So with that out the way, how do you actually swap between Skylanders, and this is where the D-pad comes into the picture. Since I don't know how to explain it in words, here's an example. Let's say you're playing as Blast Zone and you want to switch to a different Skylander. Press the left button on the D-pad and it will switch Blast Zone out with Star Strike, and you can switch back by pressing the top D-pad, where Blast Zone is located, and it will be displayed where your Skylanders are on the D-pad in the upper left corner of your screen. The Skylander in use being in a circle in the center while the other's on the outside of the circle, and they will swap out like they do with Villains and Trap Team or switch to that character depending on the level. But that's just for four Skylanders. Let's say you want to be a little more dangerous and use five Skylanders at once. Well, everything works the same, except for the Skylanders will just change buttons instead of going back to their original spot when you swap to a new one. Well, what if you want to play as a Skylander that isn't on any of the D-pad buttons? 
Simple. Just hold down one of the buttons, and once the menu opens up, move over to the Skylander you want to swap out with before pressing the button again, and voila! Enjoy your new Skylander for free roam and missions. Some missions will be locked to a certain group of Skylanders for story purposes the first time around, but you can turn that setting off since I know it's going to be controversial. But that's the main way I want to be played. It's kind of going to work like the character menus in old LEGO Star Wars games, each element being grouped together and the Skylander being displayed with their portal animation and catchphrase above while you select them. Now, the biggest problem with this system is how the SWAT Force members are going to work, but the best thing I came up with was you're just going to have to select them twice. Press the button when you have the top half selected, and a second menu will open up showing off all the bottom halves and you'll just have to repeat what you did earlier to complete the process. But before we go, there's one more thing that I want to do involving the D-pad, and that's adding difficulty to the game. Now, the one thing that really bothers me about Skylanders, or at least Swap Force, is that failing a level isn't really dependent on how well you are at the game, it depends on how many Skylanders you have. Sure, every Skylander you have is one to two shots on Nightmare Mode, but it doesn't really matter when you have 300 Skylanders you can throw into the meat grinder until the level ends or you get sick of the pain. Instead, what we're going to do is once a Skylander is defeated, along with them not being available for the rest of the level, it will damage whatever part of the D-pad that Skylander was on until that part of the D-pad is completely broken and can't be used anymore. I know this may be a bit controversial, so I'll add a setting in the save creation menu that can turn this function off before you create that save. That can be toggled on and off in the hub world. So when it is turned on, it will take 3 hits for it to break on medium and 2 hits on hard in nightmare mode, which basically means that you get 13 Skylanders per level on medium, but you get 9 on harder difficulties. This is basically meant to add a bit of challenge to the game and force players to think about engagements with enemies instead of going broken Skylander go burr. But like I said earlier, this can be turned off when you're opening a new save file or in the hub world. And when it comes to the difficulty of the game itself, it isn't just going to make enemies attack stronger, but it's also going to make them faster like increasing the speed of shockwaves or charge attacks or increasing the range. Speaking of Skylanders, most of the Skylanders from the past games are going to be here along with 20 new members of this new roster, which at first sounds like a lot until you realize that's two new Skylanders for every element, and all of them represent some period of Skylanders history. There's a couple new giants, there's a few new superchargers, there's a ton more core members, and there's even a few more trap team members, including one of the main characters. But the only gimmick Skylanders that won't have any new additions are the Swap Force, because that would raise a few questions that I just don't really want to answer, and the senseis, because I honestly think that there's enough of them as is. Now, the timeline that I've decided to set up for this game is that all of the games except for Heroes are canon, and that's because these characters exist. Don't worry, I'll explain later. The comics I know about will also be canon, but I'll make sure to bring them up whenever they become relevant. But with that out of the way, let's get on to the look at the levels of the game. When it comes to the levels, it's going to be a mixture of all the level types throughout all the Skylanders games, but there will be another thing as well, a movable camera that can zoom in and out. Don't worry, it isn't mandatory, it's just an extra feature that you can toggle on and off by pressing the right analog stick. Now, for the biggest and probably most controversial part of this fan game, Eon is no longer with the Skylanders, and this takes place years after Superchargers. Now, I'm not exactly sure if I want him to be dead or just absent, but it was said in Spyro's Adventure that Eon has been growing weaker with age, so it's not out of the picture that he would want to retire or his spirit body thing just fizzles away after Superchargers. So I'll allow you guys to decide for yourselves in the comments if he retired or if he died. Eon's life is in your hands, viewers. Choose wisely. Now that I think about it, that's probably why the Sensei branch of the Skylanders even exists in Imaginators. The Skylanders are going to need guidance when he's gone. But this scenario without Eon also raises the question of, how did the Skylanders go on without him and the other Portal Masters? Because it's almost been like 8 going on 9 years without a Skylanders game. Also, another thing to point out, most of the new Skylanders I show off through artworks are not mine. I need to make this extremely clear so I do not get sued. I basically drew over a couple of character creators from Picrew, but if you already watched the custom Skylanders video, you already know the jig. So those character creators will be linked down in the description below throughout this entire series because they deserve credit for their work. Those artworks have just been very helpful, especially for the custom Skylanders series. And finally, when it comes to chaos and the other villains of Skylands, like the Doom Raiders, and the ungodly amount of villains introduced in the games and comics, a lot of them are going to have a part in this remake and their upcoming expansion packs slash DLCs, but they aren't going to be the main villain that the Skylanders are going to face. I'll talk about them when we get to them. But with that out the way, let's slide our disc in, press any button to start, create our save file, and dive straight into our imaginary game, Skylanders. Return to Skylands.
The game starts out with a completely black screen, the screen staying like that for some time before the sound of rain enters earshot, a puddle of water beginning to form on the ground before a boot crashes into it. Our shot then shifts to a boy obscured by shadow in a dark forest, running from something or someone before he eventually comes across a large derelict house in the middle of the forest, the boy completely stopping in his tracks once he comes across it. He quickly looks around before rushing up to the house and going inside, wandering around the building with his face obscured the entire time and after a few seconds, finds a stairwell that leads to the building's basement, the boy cautiously walking down it before reaching the bottom. The boy looks around the completely gutted basement, remarking how empty it is before eventually spotting a desk at the far end of the room, the boy going over to it only to see the moonlight shining onto the portal of power on a desk, the moonlight peeking in through a window. He picks up the portal and looks at it before tightening his grip and tossing it into the wall behind him, angrily remarking that the portal would actually be useful if it could take him away from this place. Just as he's about to leave the basement, the portal of power suddenly flickers, catching his attention before suddenly activating, creating a vortex that starts to suck everything into it. The boy quickly tries to escape by running up the stairwell, but the portal manages to drag him back down, the portal dragging him into the air and pulling him into it, closing after Afterwards, as the screen cuts to black. We then fade into the shot of a night sky, the stars beginning to twinkle into view before the camera pans down to Zook and Eruptor walking through a snowy valley, which somewhat resembles the Empire of Ice level for visual clarity. Eruptor asks Zook when they're going to get to the Ice Kingdom, and Zook responds that they're nearly there considering all the snow on the ground, Eruptor making an offhand comment that they should have gotten Flynn to fly them there, only for someone to shout down to them that Her Highness just returned, so airships won't be allowed anywhere near the kingdom, even from Skylanders. The two turn to face the sound, only to see children slide down one of the hillsides to greet them. Eruptor and Zuko are initially shocked when they see her and ask why she isn't back with the Ice Queen, but Chill reveals that she went out to fend off some Cyclopses that were getting way too close to the kingdom for comfort, and that she could use some help sending them away. Zook immediately agrees to help her, but Eruptor points out that Spyro wanted them to go to the Ice Kingdom to check up on things, only for Zook to respond that Spyro never said when, so they could make a small detour. Eruptor responds by saying that he's technically right with a grin on his face before joining the two, and the level starts from there. This is basically every Skylanders tutorial mission with a metric ton of snow dumped everywhere. We start the chapter off as Zook with Eruptor as a momentary NPC and go around learning mechanics like pushing blocks into place and fighting new types of enemies, like Choppies, Choppy Pods, the basic Cyclopses, and their two variants, the Brawl Bucklers and the Chuckers. This is basically a way of incorporating previous enemies into the game while also teaching potentially new players how to play the game and how you need to take different approaches when dealing with new enemies. The mission goes on like this for a little while before you come upon a bridge with an elemental gate on it. She'll explain that she can get them through, doubling as a way to teach new players how to swap Skylanders, while explaining how elemental gates work, Zook making an offhand comment on how annoying they were when he was a wanderer. After that, you continue fighting through the level, coming across your first battle gate in Sparkloft before coming across a magic gate off the side of the path you're taking. Zook pointing out the gate and Eruptor responding that they can come back here later with Spyro if he isn't busy, with Chill chiming in saying that Spyro is always busy, so they should bring someone else with a magic element. Now, this not only adds a little bit of world building, but it also explains to new players that you don't need specific characters to unlock certain gates, which weirdly enough is something that I thought I had to do when I was little. The three then make it to a snow sled at the end of the section and use it to get to the next. It's basically a small mini game similar to Subway Surfer, where you switch to different sides of the field or jump to avoid debris and parts of a mountain before you arrive at the gate of the kingdom, which is currently under attack by a large group of Cyclopses while knights with a similar design to chill fend them off from the top of the wall. After you defeat the Cyclopses, one of the knights thanks the Skylanders before telling them that the snow cannon at the exterior of the castle isn't working, before chill tells him not to worry and that she'll go out and fix it the knight thanking her and saying that the three are lifesavers. As you make your way to the tower, Zook asks how they're going to fix it, adding that they aren't Sprocket before Chill responds that she has a sneaky suspicion on what's wrong with it. When you make it to the tower, you see a group of Cyclopses along with a Greeble in a pirate hat, who brags about he, Lieutenant Wolf, disabled the turret before Chill cuts him off. Wolf telling his Cyclopses to teach the Skylanders a lesson, and after you defeat all the Cyclopses in a semi-arena battle, Wolf anxiously says that he has matters to attend to before jumping off the cliff behind him and making a hasty retreat in his aircraft. Cho points out how weird it is for Agreeable to be this far out, but Eruptor jokes that the Cyclopses must be hiring before you reactivate the turret, which turns around to face the path you just came from before firing, an in-game cutscene playing where you get to see the turret shots decimate the Cyclopses back at the wall. 
burying some of them in ice and forcing the rest to retreat. The knights at the wall cheering before the mission comes to a close. Another cutscene starts with the three Skylanders back at the wall, the gates opening and the queen walking out along with Bouncer and Drill Sergeant. A raptor asks the obvious question of why they weren't out there defending the castle with them, and they responded that they wanted to, but Chill told them to protect the queen. Chill commenting that she won't let her queen get kidnapped for a second time. After hearing that, the queen chimes in and says that what happened wasn't her fault, and that she doesn't have to beat herself up about it, and responds that it's good to have her back. Chill then relays to her that if she doesn't mind, she's going back to the Skylanders Academy, as she feels like that's where she belongs, the queen telling her that she doesn't have to ask permission, but that she's always welcome back in the Ice Kingdom. Chill thanks the Ice Queen before Rupter asks them if they could head inside already, because all the fightings made him hungry. But just before they all go inside, a large shadow creeps across the entire kingdom, the ground beginning to rumble and catching everyone there, including the knights, completely off guard. A raptor looking up and remarking that the food can wait before the screen cuts to black. And that is where the first chapter ends. Now, to everyone who got to this point, thank you so much for watching. This was such an endeavor to make, and even though I had to go through a lot of hoops just to get this done, I still enjoy the final product, and I hope you guys enjoyed as well. But I'd like to warn you all that this probably will be the only video for a long while, because the script for the second episode isn't even done yet, so uh, I still have a lot to think about. Not to mention how flimsy the storyline is right now, so I'm gonna have to try and patch it as I'm making these videos. Like I said earlier, this is just a test run to see if you guys enjoy a project like this, so it's absolutely crucial for you guys to spread this video around to your friends, associates, and even family if you feel like it to show me you want more additions to this project of mine. And if you do, leave some ideas down in the comments, and they might get incorporated into the series. But with that out the way, this is where I'm going to take my leave. Like always, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy videos like this, share this around so I can grow as a channel, leave some comments down below to make the algorithm happy, and I will see you all in the next one.